really excited to see all of the funds that are coming together um, to talk about what they're doing, to talk about how to uh, build structures for um, better funding mechanisms, and not just funding, but optimization mechanisms. So there's this a crucial difference uh, that I think is tremendously overlooked in our macro system, worldwide nation state based um, grant funding oriented structures, which is primarily a funding system with no good feedback mechanism and no good feedback loop, and therefore it cannot optimize well. So what I hope to do in this uh, talk is to talk about um, why we need optimization to be much better, what do the feedback loops represent, um, I'll use venture capital as an example uh, to kind of uh, learn lessons from, and then I'm gonna talk about a bunch of the work that we're doing to build these things that we're calling network funds or blue funds. Um, the blue and green dichotomy, you'll, you'll get a sense. That whole like uh, gradient that you see at the top that I use in a bunch of talks has a meaning. Uh, we're going from the science-oriented part, the early uh, long-term um, uh, development of knowledge to translate all of that science into technology that we can put in products and we can use and so on. So green funds work really well. Venture capital funds work really well. Uh, we need better structures for blue funds or like these teal in between funds. Uh, so the structure of the talk is this. Uh, we're, we'll go through um, capital allocation as a, as a distributed optimization problem and, and why um, capitalism works really well and why venture capital specifically works well. Um, we'll dive into the detail of uh, what makes venture capital work well, and then we'll try to back into what must network capital look like? How must it operate? What are the components that we need to um, build into these systems to make them work? Uh, so what's going on in the, in the broader landscape is that there is a um, infinitely dimensional, um, but maybe sparsely populated um, space of variables to optimize at any given moment in time. Uh, and maybe what humans care about is a much smaller space than that, but still extremely dynamic, extremely large, extremely um, difficult to measure, um, and extremely difficult to make predictions about. Uh, and so what's going on in our broader coordination problems and broader coordination systems, uh, and this affects us every, from the uh, local scale of like how you're operating right now as a human to how the entirety of our species is operating at a, at a grand scale, um, it's all about optimization systems. Ah, is it disconnecting? Great, is it flickering? Thank you. Um, yeah, it seemed like the, I think the new MacBooks have not yet optimized their, uh, their new HDMI ports, so the dongles probably are still good. Um, so the, the optimization process that we, um, that, that we have to like, get to is how to allocate and organize our resources to move through this, these, these surfaces that are extremely large, extremely dynamic, um, and how to do so as effectively as possible. Um, in reality, like no group gets to look at the whole surface. You're usually only looking at a patch. You're looking at a small area, and you can maybe um, reason about locally uh, about what's going on. And you can maybe summarize that information and propagate it to other people. And I'm sure that all of you have had trouble convincing somebody else of something you know to be true based on all the observations you have, have seen. So you know how hard it is to then have chains of reasoning and chains of, um, of descriptions. So imagine how hard it is to get our systems to um, coordinate on some local information and aggregate that to then make decisions somewhere else about, um, about reality. Uh, this is actually not quite true. In reality, like, you're looking at that uh, most of the time. And um, the reason that capitalism has worked so well over the last uh, hundred, few hundred, couple hundred years is that it, it is a structure that works well at, the, at various different scales in this optimization surface. Um, it's similar to, to biological evolution where it enables a runtime where new organisms can emerge they need resources, so they, they are forced to, to optimize. If they don't optimize, they will die. And if they find a good sweet spot, they, they can grow, um, potentially reproduce, potentially um, continue um, operating, and so on. And if at any point they lose track of reality, they'll wither and die. And that's extremely crucial to this optimization process working. The other thing that's crucial it is, that, is that it's open and permissionless, that at any point a new entity can, can start anywhere in the optimization surface and try to optimize from there, um, using local information ideally. So um, putting this together, like imagine how difficult it is to do central planning about around a surface of this magnitude when all the parts are only looking at a local patch and then trying to convince each other to create one set of policies and apply them everywhere. Even with supercomputers now, even um, you know, massive scale AI systems will have distributed algorithms that, to reason about um, all of the complexity in a local way and apply local policies. Um, 
So part of what varies in, in the capital structure is that what looks like this to some, some group might look very different in another area of the market or another area of the world or another industry. And so you have all of these different entities looking at some small patches and tons of competition in that area um, as the surface is, is changing all the time, as the surface is encountering new technologies that totally change the, the structure. Um, now, what makes all of this work is that there is a you know, system of message passing and value flows between all of these parties to help organize and, and um, uh, help optimize this large, large structure. Uh, cool, so um, one of the things that I'm extremely uh, interested in helping optimize is this innovation chasm. It's, it's about um, what happens between coming up with good ideas and trans translating those good ideas into technology that we can put into products and uh, broadly diffuse. Because I think that our super, the superpowers that technology grants us um, are, uh, or, and the superpowers that science maybe illuminates as potential uh, only get realized when you do an enormous amount of R&D um, development uh, to get it, get it out there. And there's a lot of like, lacking optimization in that area. It, there's no good structure for optimization in that, in that part. Um, the incentive structure on the right is kind of like the capital incentive structure, and that tends to work well for whatever the optimization surface is doing. But it's very um, brittle when it comes to what capital values. So if a, the capital structure's value is something that humanity doesn't really value, then you get bad results. And you can probably look at um, the state of the world today as a good example of like, what happens when you have capital systems misaligned with human values. Uh, so maybe you know, rewriting the structure there and orienting capital to maximize for what humanity does value might yield to much better outcomes. Um, on the flip side, on the uh, academic side, we have all kinds of um, incentive structure problems as well, where it, there's academic credit, um, and that works as a robust incentive structure, um, but it tends to be to create an environment that is very difficult to um, experiment in, where you um, are punished for trying things that may not work out. You're um, punished for um, uh, publishing things that, or, or not just publishing, but, but trying things that will um, that are potentially promising bad directions, and you're certainly not rewarded for translating uh, any of the, your ideas and thoughts and, 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 um, and good uh, publications into technology that, that creates some broad, broad utility. Uh, so let's look at venture capital for a moment. Uh, these like so-called green funds. Here, let me... I like, um, should I unplug and replug? Or is that too dangerous? Yeah, I'll try it. Uh, it might be, it's worked fine in other times. I think it might be cable. Um, can you live with that? Is that okay? All right. Um, so let's talk about venture capital. Um, the basic structure of how venture, the venture capital industry, industry works is this, where there's uh, you know, a set of, there, there, it's, an, it's really a kind of service providing industry that is helping solve an optimization problem within, within the broader structure. There's um, a lot of um, money in the world um, in, large, in managed in large, massive, massive scale funds that don't have the visibility and ability to look at some local area in the optimization surface. And then on the other side, there's entrepreneurs and companies and builders who need capital to be able to uh, flesh out their ideas and get things out there. Um, venture capitalists, um, venture capital structures are different funds um, that find a spot in the, in the optimization surface um, raise capital from other investors and deploy it into startups. And so they serve as like this really useful signal processing node in between to use local information to try and deploy, deploy capital. And in reality, it's not just one entity there. There's a whole set of networks in there. Um, in terms of, I won't kind of like recapit recapitulate the uh, success of venture capital, but you know, just look at some graphs of you know, most of the technologies that we use today um, have been you know, in some way, shape, or form influenced by venture capital um, and so on. The, the structure has this kind of, what I, what I like to call a ladder um, or staircase structure, where you have uh, companies being able to raise different amounts of funding at different stages um, so that you can try out things at smaller scale, and if they're working, if you get a good signal, then you can start scaling. Um, and so this entire structure, this ability of, of the, the market to optimize for these pieces um, is part of what enables the venture capital um, uh, success story. That you can have many different funds operating at these different stages with different perspectives and theses about how to do it right. Um, and, and in reality, you have thousands to tens of thousands of, of entities doing this um, to, to make this work really well. Uh, so again, it's a signal processing problem. It's about how do you aggregate information in that massive scale optimization surface, bring it together into a resource allocation um, uh, distributed system. 
Uh, there's an enormous amount of, of money flowing through it. It's been very successful in producing a lot of uh, corporations and a lot of technology. Um, and there's an enormous amount of, of, of capital in, in the system. And there's tons of funds. Um, there really are, um, it, it's a super vibrant ecosystem that enables new fund managers to emerge to, to build new, new structures, deploy capital, and if they're successful, um, and this is the key part, if they're successful, they tend to be able to raise larger funds and larger funds and larger funds. And the moment they stop being successful, they raise smaller and smaller and smaller funds or die. And that's a critical part of making this whole optimization process work. Um, so I kind of like have this model for, for how the picture works, which is you have a startup um, or a company of some sort and it's selling some products into market and uh, creating cash flow. Now it could try and sell its stock in the broader public stock market, um, but the broader public stock market doesn't have enough information gathering about that particular company to be able to make really good decisions um, about how to run it, how to help it, and, and so on. Uh, so you end up in a structure where instead um, that company will um, sell part of its cash flow or, or potential future cash flow um, to investors that can help it in that uh, stage of its life. Uh, and so that means, think of like fractionalizing the potential future outcome. It's not the outcome today, it's not the cash flow now. It's a potential future cash flow as sold to another market of investors, the public markets, um, and they sell that potential prospective um, uh, measure um, at that moment in time. And so this is really a predict, what, what this is doing is creating a prediction market on the um, future cash flows of these corporations. And you know, there's, of course, uh, many ways to like, realize that cash flow through dividends, liquidations, acquisitions, and so on. Uh, but usually, it ends up being selling the stock in a public market at some point. Which, by the way, is kind of a bug in, in for other reasons, but I won't go into that. Now, let's look at a VC fund itself. So a VC, VC fund works by um, funneling cash flow, uh, f funneling money into companies, taking some pieces from them. And they themselves have um, uh, a set of investors, and VCs raise from other investors using the same exact composable structure. So they can um, flow, th this tra this, the transactions of a VC uh, fund are composable in a super neat way. They, um, you have a transaction of cash flow going out in one direction and kind of getting stock back, and you have these same exact transaction on the other side to raise capital. Uh, the VC fund gives stock and uh, gets cash on the other side. So you have this structure where you can feed forward cash and back propagate um, uh, stock, and you have this signal processing unit. Uh, and the ease compose super nicely and super neatly. So you, you have many uh, fund to fund structures uh, or VCs with, with uh, angel scout funds, and these you know, stack and stagger and so on. There probably aren't that many layers, uh, but, it, but what I want to sort of convey to you is that there's something else that we're building a lot of that looks a lot like this um, that I'll get to in, in, in a moment. But anyway, part of what's doing this is that the, fun, the funds upstream are much larger in size and in, ca in capital uh, range, and these, these structures enable um, more fine-grained allocation of resources and capital across the, across the board. And so this is what helps build this massive staircase with tons of thousands, you know, thousands and thousands of, of VC funds that are allocating um, value this way. Uh, so there's a lot, another thing that looks a lot like this, um, and these are neural networks. Um, they're, I, I don't think this is an accident. I think that this is uh, something fundamental about these composable units that can over time develop and, and help bring optimization. They're not doing proper you know, feed forward and back prop in the way that neural networks do, but these are kind of um, Bayesian reasoning type um, entities with uh, an, an evolutionary structure uh, encoded into it, which is precisely what you need to optimize the surface. Now, let's talk about uh, network capital. I'm running out of time, so um, the, the key thing that I wanted to, to kind of impart upon is that decomposition of the venture capital system as an integrated system with that composability of the structure. So we'll look at um, blue funds and network capital and the pieces of those uh, and to see how, how to compose something like that in, um, to create funding structures for public goods. So going back to this problem, we, we, what we want to do is create incentive structures and funding things that can be successful in that area of the, of the market. Now, there isn't good cash flow optimization there, or this would have been a solved problem through VC. Uh, so we need something else that, can, that we can use as a way to um, derive value here. Uh, the good news is that there's an enormous amount of funding that is deployed um, through to science and uh, in charity and, and so on. But the bad news is that there aren't that many funds. Um, it's, it's highly centralized. Um, the further up you go, the fewer entities there are. So it, it is not a good optimization structure. And, and worst of all is it's, that it's not composable. You don't have a good way to stagger funds and to propagate funding across uh, different, different um, to, to build a network of funding structures. So going back to this, we want something like this. We want to have a version of this that works 
to do um, this kind of public good funding, not just funding the creation of a private cash flow as the stock market values, but a funding structure that can enable the, the broad production of public goods, um, and ideally with a feedback mechanism that, that enables a prediction market to form in, to optimize that surface. So let's look in detail at public good organizations. Then they tend to kind of uh, create a public good and they sort of give it to, to the broad public. And usually what comes back uh, in the other direction is kind of like some sense of mission accomplished, some goal um, has been done that is often one of the primary reasons why people do this kind of stuff. The other part is thanks or, or broadly, um, broadly recognized credit uh, for doing this kind of uh, good impact. There's some other kind of measures and so on, but it's broadly you know, these, kinds of, these kinds of structures. And there is some amount of fundraising that happens where those organizations can turn to a set of, of um, donors or you know, investors in the, in the outcome of public goods um, and propagate the credit and the utility or the sense that the mission has been accomplished. And so these other you know, kind of things are getting propagated back. But it's not very fungible, and there's no good way of, of scaling it. So what we ideally want is we want a structure kind of like this, where you can, we, you can develop a, a large-scale optimization surface where anybody can go and create a new fund, and you, en you enable these signal processing units that can operate at very different scales. You need fund of funds to, to exist here, and crucially, you need performance signals to impact the funding scales. Many grant programs out there, including some of the largest scale grant programs in the world, do not really uh, have a, a uh, strong feedback loop between the capital uh, deployed and the capital invested in a process, how well that turned out, um, and feed that back into their ability to allocate more and more capital to a field. You also get a cases where you have very large funds trying to allocate capital in areas where, uh, in, in many different fields without a lot of knowledge and a lot of signal processing, and you get into like these very, really bad feedback loops where massive amounts of money just gets deployed in, in poor ways. So what we need is some, some composable structure, the ability to create a fund structure similar to a VC fund that has composability, so you can, a fund itself can raise capital from other funds like it, um, that it can deploy capital and it can get feedback directly in that transaction. We need to make that transaction itself composable. And this is what part of the problem here. We don't have a good unit to sort of propagate back. Um, however, we might be able to create a unit like this. Um, so through things like you know, the public funding mechanism uh, exploration that's happening in the, in the crypto space, in the DAO space, um, we might be able to get to um, a, a structure here. Let me uh, switch. So, so one idea, and it's not clear whether this will work, but this is kind of what I, what I think might work. Um, is that we can, what we can do is we can fractionalize the, the value flow of one of these sort of public, public good funding structures through the use of impact certificates. So if we can use impact certificates to quantify the value of a particular fund as it deploys capital in, a, in an ecosystem and use that as a version of a stock certificate um, in, in a corporation, so if we can use impact certificates to create a much more um, um, aggregatable and, and evaluatable and um, uh, legible and so on structure for de and tradable structure to deal with um, uh, impact, this kind of like broad based public goods impact, then we have a component and a tool that we can then use in this transaction to trade back and forth through these, through these entities. So that's kind of what we need in these um, uh, structures over here. So if we, if we can turn this, the, so what, what in the VC world is a, is a stock certificate, in the public goods world we can use an impact certificate and part of what's required here is a broad market, like the stock market, that is going to value these impact certificates, that is going to value the utility of those components, and is going to pay large amounts of money. We're talking billions of dollars worth of capital deployed against these impact certificates. If we can get that to work, then we can build an optimization surface like this, and an optimization system with a bunch of little composable um, uh, units um, that can build uh, you know, this broad, larger scale uh, network of blue funds. Uh, blue here is like the, the, this kind of public uh, good oriented, oriented thing. One of the key things here is you can do carry structures with impact certificates. You can, you can have the traditional VC style um, uh, performance indicator of carry um, and, not have, and, and really couple the, the performance of the fund associated with the impact that you care about doing. And what's really cool about impact certificates is that you can do um, impact certificates associated with specific fields. You can value those impact certificates with a group of people that understand that field and can know after the fact, five years later, 10 years later, and so on, what that impact uh, was really worth. 
So my sense is that we can do this kind of thing for open source, and we can use impact certificates in these kinds of um, kind of structures. Uh, there's a great talk um, from Puja uh, in the last event that goes into, into a bunch of structures. I think that impact certificates can be weaved through most of these. Uh, we can do this in the science and R&D funding. We can create, um, as we have the traditional fund uh, grant systems, we can start flowing back impact certificates and start accumulating them. We can just start doing it and start issuing them and just accumulate all these impact certificates. Once we have a bunch of them, uh, then we can start um, putting prices for them. Something that would be really useful uh, that I've talked to people about doing is committing to buy a number of impact certificates at a particular moment in time. So if a large funder says, we will buy $5 million of impact certificates on this field every year, then there's a very strong um, encouragement for participants all over the world to do a lot of work to create those impact certificates and then compete for that, for that funding at the end. Um, we can do this for uh, decarbonization and so on. And one of the good news is that uh, carbon credits and uh, renewable energy certificates and a lot of other financializing instruments are exactly the kind of impact certificates um, that we're talking about. Those are just a special case uh, uh, example in a specific field, but what we're talking about is something much more general, something much more composable, and something much more legible by the capital structures that exist today. Like we basically want to come up with something that we can just hook into the capital structures and, and make them all work. Uh, cool. So with that, um, last plug for, um, sorry, this Gitcoin. It auto-corrected. That's so annoying. Uh, just like, <laughs> how rude. <laughs> this is the most... The most degen thing ever, instead of turn into the most regen thing ever. Uh, <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, if it only were that easy, right? Um, cool. So with that, uh, thank you very much. Uh, sorry for going a bit over, over time, and I apologize for having a new MacBook and uh, filling us all with problems. Thank you.